Today I'm very lucky to be interviewing Sunbow Pendragon, and I hope I pronounced that correctly. Yes. Uh, she, <laughs> she is the author of the Black Knight of Avalon Chronicles and the Natan Liads. I'm hoping I said that right. Yes, you did. <laughs> Yay! Um, <laughs> I want to thank you so much for agreeing to this interview. Uh, could you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself? Well, let's see. Um, I'm almost 59. I'll be 59 in July. I've been writing for about 26 odd years. Mm -hmm. uh, mar married almost 32. Uh, two adult children. Uh, spent 40 years in the restaurant business before retiring and becoming a full-time writer. I was going to ask you that, too, if you did that part-time or full-time, but you're doing it full-time now, correct? Uh, well, with the writing, I write my own books, I do all my own editing, and I do all my own promotion. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so yeah, well, you're I a busy, know. busy woman. <laughs> <laughs> so how many books in total have you written so far? I have written 11. 10 are published. Mm-hmm. What the the eleventh of my new book? It'll be released in a couple of weeks. That's great. Um, did you always see yourself being a writer? I always wanted to be a writer, but I, I just I was never confident enough to uh, to think I had the gift. Mm -hmm. And despite but despite the lack of uh, of encouragement, I just kept writing, despite the fact I was never happy with the tales, and they usually ended up in the recycling basket. I know how that is. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so talking about your books, we're going to use all of your books for an example. I'll let you start with whichever set you want to start with. Can you give us some insight into like the main character and the, and the, the setting for the books? Sure. Well, maybe I should explain a little bit about the inspiration behind the Black Knight of Avalon Chronicles. Yes, because this is a great story, guys. You want to listen to this. I love this story. <laughs> um, one night about 25 years ago, I went to bed like I always do and woke up in the dream. I was lucid dreaming. Mm -hmm. And a great lady, a very tall, beautiful woman, dressed all in white, introduced herself to me as Sir Ridwin and took me by the hand and said she had something she had to show me. And what I experienced after that was so startlingly real. I could touch things and feel things and hear things and smell things as well as seeing what was going on around me. When I woke from the dream, I told my husband what I'd, I'd seen and he, t he told me, you gotta start right, you gotta, you gotta write this down. Right? So, the main character of the Black Knight of Avalon Chronicles, of course, is the Black Knight of Avalon. Mm -hmm. He's Sir Ridwin's champion. He defends the Avalon and the priestesses and all who follow the, the goddess's way. When they're mistreated or harmed, the Black Knight comes to make it right. He provides gold when there's a need, or food or clothing. He settles debts, monetary or otherwise, so that people can survive and keep their lands. Most importantly, he acts against those who would plot against the, in the dark against Arthur, making certain that the realm is not overthrown by treason and deceit. He tests the knights to assure that they have the best of character and intent, and he even reminds Arthur from time to time that his own vow has been given to the lady and the land. He does all this while maintaining an alter ego as one of the minor knights of Camelot, a former king's ward, a fatherless man. The tale is, I have been told by some of my readers, the most unusual tale of Camelot they've ever read. <clears throat> the, the second series I have is my original series. It's called mm -hmm. The Natanliads. It's the tale of a magical family ruling over a magical land between the worlds. Concealed behind the cloud of mist that usually surrounds their land, the Natanliads, an ancient royal family, rule over a usually peaceful people. The books tell of a time of civil strife, the struggle of good against evil. The tale is of Aaron, a poor farmer's adopted son. The lad is a t the child of a temple priestess and has been raised on a farm far away from most of the trouble and war. He dreams of being a knight in the army and of helping the people he loves to find a better life. 
When his stepfather is murdered and his mother and sisters taken away by a cruel ruler, he is left to himself in the wilds until he is found by famous troops of mercenaries. Their commander, a harsh but fair man, takes him on as a squire, and he follows the troop through their missions to put an end to the civil strife, destroying the land. See, now that sounds so interesting. It really does. I love fantasy books, so yeah. <laughs> I've always loved fantasy books. Yeah, fantasy books are great, especially when they, you read a book and it takes you to a different place, and I love that. I know? love that. Yes. I love immersive fan. I love immersive stuff. I love yes. to be taken to the into the reader, the author's mind, just a little bit, and I want him to create a world for me. Exactly, exactly. Because reading, reading was always like that for me as a child, even, you know, you could go somewhere else. It was kind of like um, the never ending story. Exactly. Yeah, you would yeah. grab your grab your dog and you know, ride off to a never and you know, fantasy place and just, you know, adventures and just it was always amazing like that. And, and I'm thankful that we still have people who write those like yourself. Oh, I am too. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is a funny kind of question, but why do you write? That is, a, it's a great question because, you know, people always wonder what motivates authors to write. I write because I enjoy it. I write because it's fun. It makes me happy. When I'm writing, everything else goes away. All my troubles, all my cares, everything I'm worried about just goes away. I have so many ideas for books. When I finish one, I can hardly wait to start the next one. And that's awesome. Now, do you ever get writer's block? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Every writer I know does. When you just, you sit there and you stare at the computer and go, what? Yeah, right. And that's when you turn the computer off and you walk away. I've learned just to walk away and go garden or go cook something or go in, go for a walk. And just, I stay away from it for a few days until I feel like I can write again. That makes sense. Now, do you set a special time or a place to where you write? Well, I usually start writing as soon as my husband leaves for work for the day, mm -hmm. which is about mm, 6.30 in the morning. Oh, wow. And then as the day goes by, I, you know, it's one of those things where you write a little bit and go do a chore and write a little bit and go do that. And, you know, go fold a load of laundry, then go back and write some more. And, mm -hmm. and that's how I write. And it works. No, so. it works. It apparently <laughs> works okay. <laughs> it's working for you really well. Um, when you write, do you do you longhand, typewriter, computer? I started out um, with on with pencils on legal pads, mm -hmm. and then about well, let's see, about a year, two years after I started writing, my in-laws bought a uh, helped us buy a. Um, Brother word processor, you know, the old oh, kind. I remember those. I, have I still those. have it. Actually. Oh, that's awesome. I have that one. And uh, I did all the rest of the, all of the rest of the writing. I transcribed all of my handwritten stuff onto the discs. And oh, then wow. from that point on, I've done everything electronically. Yeah. It makes sense. I mean, I'm, I'm the it just type goes person who takes the notes and yeah. then ends up putting them in the computer. So. <laughs> <laughs> now, how much research do you do when you're writing? Excuse me? How much research do you do oh, when you're writing? Well, you know, I did. I had volumes and boxes of research at one point that I'd put together over the years, and I lost it all oh. in a flood. Oh. I had all of it stored in a nice dry basement. We got a huge rainstorm for several days. I walked down into the basement to get something, open the door, and, you know, four feet of water came flying out. Or came oh. out and I lost everything. Oh. everything. Six, probably six or seven years worth of research. Oh. So I've done, I haven't done it since. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like, I nope. done it since. <laughs> and um, I don't script my books anymore. So when I need to, when I'm, when I'm writing along and I have a question, mm -hmm. fortunately we have the internet and I can go ahead and I can search it all out and make sure that what historical facts are going in my book, since I write historical fantasy, mm -hmm. I want the historical facts to be as as accurate as possible. Yeah, and thank the gods for the internet because, oh, oh. God. Yeah, oh. It, it makes us <laughs> life so much easier now. <laughs> Remember microfish? Yes, I do. <laughs> uh -huh. 
I'm, no, I'm dating myself here, but yes, I do. Oh, yeah. yeah. Libraries and catalogs. Remember card catalogs? Yes, I still remember how to read a card catalog. Yeah. I actually had to show somebody how to do it. <laughs> The other oh my god yeah yeah we're dating ourselves here just a little bit <laughs> eight track tapes you know yeah <laughs> what was the hardest part about writing any of your books getting started really getting started yep letting myself believe that i was good enough to pursue produce something that somebody would read hmm. just getting over that fear of rejection if you will yeah and that's that's, that's a big part. fear for a lot of people too so what was the easiest part in writing any of your books? Well, once I got started, it was really hard to stop. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just been slowing out ever since. So. Wow. Well, that's oh. great, though. And and we talked about it. You do your own editing. Mm -hmm. And you do your own publishing. Mm -hmm. Well, I I have to say that my husband is a big part, big, huge part of that. Mm -hmm. he, proofs, he, he proofs my books when I've got them uh, finished and edited. Mm-hmm. He proofs them when uh, they're done and make sure that I haven't, I've filled in all the plot holes and that I, the grammar is good and it reads well and all of that. He also does all of the file conversions for um, Kindle and CreateSpace and does the uploading and for that. And he does all my book covers too. So oh, amazing. Huge part. Of yeah. And, and he works cheap. So that's good. <laughs> works food. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you do to try to relax? Well, I garden, I cook, um, I take walks. Um, we just, I know when, when my husband and I are together, we, we like to go out at least once, maybe once a month and just go someplace we both love and just relax. Yeah, and that's always just, nice, especially like when you out. can do it with your significant other. It's, it's very <sighs> nice. It's always wonderful. Yes. So which authors have inspired you? Oh, my. Um, the list is huge. <laughs> so I will just pick out from the ones I collect. Okay. Um, Arthur C. Clarke, Tolstoy, Terry Brooks, Mary Stewart, Zimmer, Marion Zimmer Bradley, Ursula K. Le Guin, Ray Bradbury, Robert Howard, David Eddings, Tolkien, and J.R. Rowling, of course. Oh, of course. Now, do you have a favorite book, something that you could just read over and over and over again? Oh, no, it's too hard to choose from my friends. <laughs> For your own reading, though, which form do you prefer? Do you actually like an actual book in your hands or do you go with the digital? I love actual books and I love combing through old bookstores. I love oh, that yes. smell of old books. That's I what I was going to say, the smell of the books. I, there's something the to do smell. with old books. I don't know. I have tons and tons of old books in my house and I will open them up just to smell them. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> and you got to be really careful with some of them because the paper is so fragile. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I have a couple of those from my grandmother. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't part with them for nothing. Nobody gets those until I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> then they will go. But until then, nope. No, those are mine. Now, have you collaborated with any other authors and done any books with anyone else? Not yet. Okay. And are you, you are working on one specifically right now, correct? Yes. I'm working on book four of the Natan Liad series. Ah. I just finished edit, um, writing and editing it, and my husband's proofing it right now. Awesome. So we can be on the lookout for that one. When is that one going to be? Uh, well, I would give it a couple. Published. I would give it a couple of weeks. Yeah, <laughs> I'll make a big announcement on my Facebook page. About awesome, it. awesome. So, where can some of our listeners find your books to check them out and purchase them? Well, I have all the links to my printed books and to my Kindle author page on my fan on my my other Facebook page, and it's called Amethyst Free Press. Okay. And I have a sale happening right now on all my printed books in the Create Space store. The links are there along with the special code that you'll need to get your 15% off. Oh, awesome. See, now if you guys are listening and, and this sounds like a great series you'd like to start reading, you can get it 15% off. So can't beat that kind of deal at all. <laughs> and you can never and have too many books. Book. Yeah, and you can never have too many books. I don't care what yeah. anybody says, you can never have too many books. Because until you go to move, then you wish you don't have that many books. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when you start boxing them up, 
<laughs> it's like, why do I have this many books? Do <laughs> yeah, I really so. have this many? Yeah, it's, yeah, I've had to, I've had to thin out some of my books because, oh, you know, gosh. moving has just killed me. So, yeah, I've thinned out. But I'm starting to rebuild again, so we'll see. But I want to thank you again, uh, Sunbow Pendragon. Um, that is also a Facebook page for her, Sunbow yeah. Pendragon, um, for coming on here and letting us get a little glimpse into your world. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for joining me today. And stay tuned, everybody. We'll have more coming up next.